Hello and uh, welcome back. Um, so far, we have looked at several algorithms for uh, binary classification, specifically supervised learning problems. Um, we, have, I mean, in, under supervised learning, we have looked at regression and then specifically binary classification. And for binary classification, we have looked at several algorithms, um, which includes, let's say, logistic regression, um, support vector machines, boosting as an ensemble method, which we saw recently and even perceptron and things like that. Of course, we have also seen other methods like, uh, you know, decision trees, k nearest neighbors and so on. Um, so what uh, we are going to ask and answer today at a high level is uh, why are there so many methods, right? So um, <clears throat> for instance, when we spoke about the problem of uh, regression, um, we just came up with a single method, which was linear regression. And then we looked at uh, regularized ver version of linear regression uh, there were different types of regularization that we could do that led us to different algorithms like ridge and lasso. Uh, but then the, the underlying algorithm was still a variant of regression only, right? So where we use the squared loss um, and, and we try to minimize it plus a regularizer. Uh, whereas the case of classification, we seem to have all these different algorithms and uh, how do we understand all of these algorithms in a single unified framework? Right. So, and 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 why are there so many different algorithms? Right. So, this is what we are trying, we are going to kind of explore uh, in today's uh, lecture. So, what do we really want to do in a classification problem? Right. So, if you think about that, um, <clears throat> we want. Uh, so, we are given a data set as usual, um, x one, y one, dot dot dot, x n, y n x i's are in r t <clears throat> now y i's are in let's say uh, plus 1 minus 1 and uh, if you remember our goal was to learn some h uh, which will map r d to uh, plus or minus 1 now how do we measure the performance of h well what is the most intuitive way to measure performance in a classification problem well, what I can do is I can look at uh, performance measure, which is the error. Performance measure, I can measure the performance of a particular H um, as by looking at sum over i equals 1 to n um, indicator of H of xi not equals yi. Right. So, what does this indicator mean? Well, this indicator means that uh, indicator of some z, this is a function which takes a value 1 if z is true, we have seen this before and 0 otherwise. This just then counts the number of mistakes that h is making on the training set. So, of course, we know that we cannot let all possible h's uh, uh, learn from all possible h's because then this we can always find a h that has zero training error, but then it would have ended up minimizing, uh, sorry, sorry, it would have ended up memorizing from data, but not really learned from data. So what we typically do then is uh, we assume that h comes from some class of functions and then we only look at um, which h minimizes this in this class, right? So we've seen this before as well. So we kind of now look at minimization of h belongs to let's say h linear, which is the most natural class of functions. Um, you might want to minimize the error <coughs> indicator of h of x i <coughs> not equals y. Well, what does h linear mean? h linear means that, you know, there is some w such that h of x is w transpose x or w transpose x plus some constant c, um, which means that this is equivalent to minimize over w in R t um, sum over i equals 1 to n indicator of, well, I can also add a bias term which is uh, w transpose x plus p x i plus p um, okay indicator of sine of w transpose x i plus b not equals y <coughs> right so my h is now the sine of w transpose x i plus b um, well now i want to learn the best w and b such that this is minimum so far in all the algorithms that we have seen we have only used w uh, we have not explicitly stated the b learning the b but then uh, it's very simple, right? So all the algorithms that we have seen, you can easily extend it to the case where you have B as well. Uh, <clears throat> that doesn't really change what we are trying to do here <clears throat> so much. It just says that, you know, your, your line does not necessarily pass through origin, um, but then it can be anywhere, which is more natural to ask for. 
uh, one way to think about uh, <clears throat> you know um, how to get this in a general form um, is um, let's say you have an x uh, in rd now you can kind of make a new feature new data set where you have x so and an extra one which is added as a you know padded as a feature now this becomes this is a vector in rd plus one let's say this is my new data set now if i just learn a w a uh, line that passes through the origin right so now that w would have w1 till wd and then wd plus 1 because now the data points are in d plus 1 dimension now i will have a d plus 1 dimensional w and then now let's call this x dash right so this is w dash which can be thought of as w and this wd plus 1 which i am let's say calling as b right so now w dash transpose x dash which is you know just the simple dot product in one extra dimension is equivalent to w transpose x plus b because this guy is always one and the last value is is what i am calling as this bias right so which means that you know you don't lose anything by saying that you know you are just learning a w uh, just that you can change your data set by adding this one extra feature and then we can you know for instance we can without loss of generality think of this as our problem also of course now d is this padded dimension right so you also have this extra dimension and that is what we are going to call as d anyway so that's not the main point i'm trying to say here the main point i'm trying to say here is that well this is what this is how we are going to measure performance of a w and then we want to find this best w that minimizes this error in our training set and we said before that this is a hard problem, right? So this is what is called as an NP hard problem, uh, <clears throat> which you know uh, intuitively means that um, we don't expect to have a polynomial time algorithm which will solve this. Um, of course, if you assume that the data set is linearly separable, then we know that this can be solved using perceptron, support vector machine, and so on and so forth. Um, but if the data set is not linearly separable, then finding the best W that minimizes the um, error in this way that I have written is an NP hard problem. Now <clears throat> this is the fundamental reason why we do not have a single algorithm for binary classification because we do not know how to solve this problem right. So it is not expected to I mean we do not expect to have a solution to this problem uh, which runs in polynomial time. So we need to deal with this somehow right. So one, one line of thought would say that you make assumptions about the data and then deal with it somehow um, which is what our generative models for example do um, and once you make those assumptions maybe you can get the best w and so on um, or or even in perceptron's case we make the assumption that linear separability with gamma margin is how our data set is generated under that assumption this problem is still easy to solve but a general problem it is NP hard to solve. So how do we deal with this right. So um, now, the way different algorithms are dealing with it will become apparent if we take what is called as a loss function view. What is this loss function view? Well, this is the loss function view, um, right? So, now how much loss does a single point? suffer single x comma y in the training set suffer with respect to an underlying uh, h right so for example the um, so let's say we have an x comma y and then we ha we have an h which is r d2 plus or minus 1 now how much loss does this point suffer with respect to this h well it suffers a loss of either 0 or a loss of 1 depending on whether h correctly predicts x or not right so x is again in rd uh, y is in plus or minus 1 so depending on whether h of x equals y or h of x not equals y uh, we say that the loss for this particular data point is either 1 or 0 now one other way to say this is right so this is indicator of h of x uh, not equal to y right so this takes either value 0 or 1 now this is same as saying um, indicator of h of x um, into y right um, is less than 0 
right so um, or or in the case uh, well h can now i can even say if it's linear function i can even say w transpose x into y is less than zero right um, now what does this mean this means that why is this true right so my h is now i'm assuming my h is sine of w transpose x h of x is sine of w transpose x and now i can either define my loss for a single data point as indicator of h of x not equal to y or equivalently i can say that it's same as indicator of w transpose x into y is less than 0 why why are these two things same well if w transpose x is positive and y is also positive plus 1 right so if this is greater than 0 and if this is plus 1 then the product is positive which means that this indicator will evaluate to 0 but why is the what does it mean to say that the product is positive that is i mean if this is greater than 0 and this is plus 1 which means that the sign if i look at the sign to make a prediction because this is greater than 0 i'm going to predict plus 1 and y is also plus 1 right so so i will not make a mistake on this data point on the other hand if the other way this can become positive is if this is less than 0 and y is minus 1 in which case because this is less than 0, the sign of this is I am going to predict it as you know uh, plus, minus 1 and the label is also minus 1. So, even in that case, I do not make a mistake which means that the product in that case is also positive. On the other hand, if the product is negative, that means that you know either W transpose x is greater than 0, but then I have a minus 1 in the y or W transpose x is less than 0 I or and I have a plus 1 for the y. These are the cases when W transpose X's sign does not match with Y's sign and so we have a mismatch here which will lead to my, which will lead to a, um, a loss, a loss of 1. So, which means that I can plot this and see how this looks like, right. So, if I plot this um, as a function of, uh, let us say W transpose X into Y or um, let us say I am going to call this um, some g of x into y where my h of x is just sine of g of x well typically if you are learning from linear functions so your g of x is going to be a linear model let's say you are learning a quadratic function g of x could be a quadratic model no matter what it is i'm going to take the sine of it and then i'm that is what i'm going to make a prediction with but then the sine of what right so the g of x is going to determine whether i suffer a loss or not which means that if i plot my loss as a function of g of x into y well how is it going to look like well if the product is positive then i don't suffer any loss if the product is negative then i suffer a loss which means that whenever the product is negative i suffer a loss of one and if the product is positive i don't suffer a loss or if it is zero then let's say we can decide that we don't suffer any loss <clears throat> So, now this is the loss of a single point, right? So, this is loss, let, let me make this clear. So, this is loss of h on the point x comma y, right? Where h is defined as sine of g of x for some function g, which can be a linear function, which can be a quadratic function, depending on what function we are trying to learn, right? So, now let us look at this loss. Now, what, what do we do? This is the loss for a single point and then our actual loss that we are trying to minimize is the sum of the single points loss over all the points in the training data, right? So, sum over i equals 1 to n indicator of g of x i into y i is less than 0, right? So, this is what we are trying to find the best g, right? So, if g is linear, we are trying to find the best w. If g is quadratic, we are just find best, trying to find the best quadratic fit for the data so that minimizes this loss. So, because this is a sum, we can just look at the individual loss, right? So, for individual data points and see and already see where the problem lies, right? So, why is there an NP hardness? The, the reason why it is NP hard um, is because, right? So, of the nature of this loss function, right? So, this loss function kind of abruptly jumps uh, when, when, you, when, when this quantity g of x into y becomes less than 0, right? So, it suddenly jumps from 0 to 1. Right. So, it is it's discontinuous, that is the first thing um, and this is not convex, 
right so if this was convex then you know this function would if this was convex this is not but if this was convex then you can when you sum it up over n different data points it would be a sum of n convex functions and sum of convex functions is known to be convex and convex functions are easy to minimize right so we will be able to find the best possible solution in polynomial time whereas here that is not the case right so here the problem is this is not a convex function and so this is an np hard problem in general and so we have to somehow deal with this np hardness and different algorithms deals with it differently now let's see how each of these algorithms actually deals with it and that will kind of give us very good insight about this whole picture from a loss functions point of view okay so let's understand the uh, let's start with an algorithm which is a bad algorithm but nevertheless can be put in this framework um, the algorithm is as follows right so the algorithm is you know using um, algorithm one let's let me call this algorithm one you know using uh, regression for classification Right. So, what does uh, using regression for classification mean? Well, that there the loss of you know some function uh, with respect to uh, some function g with respect to data point um, or let me say yeah so with respect to data point x comma y um, is going to look like what? Well, it's going to look like sum over well for a single data point it's going to look like g of x minus y square this g could be w transpose x if it's linear regression this is just w transpose x right so this is how we define the loss to find a good function g or to find a good w right so and now our once you have defined the loss for a single point then you add it up over all points and find the best possible g right so now uh, but the problem is in a general linear regression problem this y can be any real values but then here y is just you know plus or minus one right so and that's why we said that this is a bad idea to use regression <coughs> to to solve the classification problem of course our h remember our h is finally going to be h of x is going to be sine of g of x right so that's always the case right so this this is the final classifier but then to find the g we are going to use a linear regression problem we know that this can be solved you know efficiently in polynomial time uh, if it's linear regression it's just matrix operations will give you the answer <coughs> And now once you get that w from linear regression then you will use sine of w transpose x to make a prediction right so um, now how do we think of this in the previous uh, picture that we have put down uh, so we can see that this is exactly equivalent to so let's see g of x into y minus 1 squared i claim that these two things are the same and we will see why writing it in this form is a good idea Right. So, now y remember can take only values plus 1 or minus 1. Right. So, if I expand this guy out, so this is just g of x squared plus y squared minus 2 g of x into y. Right. So, now this is g of x squared as usual. Um, y squared is always going to be 1 because y is just plus or minus 1. So, this is 1. So, this is minus 2 g of x into y now let's look at this quantity now this quantity is equal to g of x into y squared plus 1 squared which is 1 minus 2 g of x into y but then again g of x into y squared is g of x squared into y squared which is just g of x squared plus 1 minus 2 g of x into y this is 2 this is 1 right 1 and 2 1 equals 2 which means that I can either view the loss <coughs> when y is plus or minus 1, not in general, but when y is plus or minus 1, which is the problem that we have. g of x minus y squared is same as g of x into y minus 1 squared. Now, this means that, let us go back to our picture and see what this means. This means the following, right. So, we had this picture earlier, where we had the 0, 1 loss, which is Right. So, the blue is what is called as the 0, 1 loss. It takes a value either 0 or 1, uh, where the x-axis is g of x into y and the y-axis is, you know, loss. 
Now we are seeing the regression problem, right? So if you solve the regression problem, it means that you are in inherently using the following loss. What loss are we using? We are using the following loss that g of x into y minus 1 squared, which means as a function of g of x into y, right? So that is the variable. If you can just think of g of x into y as the variable, that's what our x-axis is. Now minus 1 squared, which means that there is a 1 somewhere here. And now that loss is going to look like the following, right? So um, <coughs> it's going to go like this, right? So this is just the function g of x into y minus 1 squared. That is the regression loss or what is usually called as the squared loss. Now, what is this telling us? <clears throat> what is this picture telling us? This picture is telling us that <clears throat> we originally wanted to measure goodness of a particular h which comes via a g for a single data point using the dark blue loss. On the other hand, if you use a regression problem to solve classification, then you are pretending that, well, the dark blue is equivalent to the light blue which is the regression loss. Instead of minimizing the dark blue loss, which is NP hard in general, we are using a surrogate loss, which is the light blue loss, which is the regression loss. Now, then as you can see, right, so <clears throat> this, the dark blue and the light blue are widely different, right? So, so why is this widely different? Why? Because, you know, <clears throat> the white blue loss, right, so even if my g of x into y is correctly predicting the sign of g of x into y even if it is correct with respect to uh, what the label true label is right so which means that when if this value is positive then that means that the sign of g of x h of x which is what the classifier would be would actually correctly predict for y still that point would suffer a increasingly large loss if the value g of x into y is large right because this is a regression problem right so you are just trying to minimize <coughs> g of x minus y squared um, and y is plus 1 or minus 1 if g of x is large but then even if it is positive the difference squared is what is contributing right so this point is contributing so much to the loss uh, and this difference can be positive even if the sign of g of x is matching y so which means that you know in this region, right, so as you move in this direction, this is going to make larger errors even for points where h of x would actually correctly predict with respect to the uh, dark blue 0, 1 loss. <clears throat> and that is why this is a bad idea, right. So especially when you have outliers, that means that the outlier is going to be somewhere here. Maybe you are predicting it correctly. I mean, h of x will predict it correctly, but then your g, which you are trying to learn, would give a large loss to it. And so <clears throat> it is a bad algorithm in general. Right. So, so, so this is a bad loss, right. So, basically what I am saying is that the light blue curve is a bad way to approximate the uh, dark blue curve. So, we need a better ways to do this. Let us see if there are better ways to do this.